Well, that escalated quickly. Hello and welcome to Lore of the Cards, the series that looks to find the lore hidden in your Hearthstone deck. The Knights of the Frozen Throne is on its way, and as far as expansion topics go, this is by far the one I'm most hyped for. As for cards, we'll have to wait and see, though from what we've seen initially, I'm optimistic. So, today I thought I'd ride the hype train, this time doing a serious video predicting what legendaries we may see in this coming expansion, with a tiny piece of lore behind each. Not a polarising joke. It's worth noting that some of these legendary suggestions could be bosses in the adventure portion of the expansion. So let's kick off with a few legendaries that are bosses too. Also worth noting, the cards are a bit of fun. I'm far from a designer. Looking at the trailer for the expansion, we see several bosses from the Ice Crown Citadel raid, and we know that one of the raid's bosses is already included as a card, Prince Keliseth. Expect an episode on him soon. Going to the site for the expansion, we know several of these bosses are fights in the adventure. The first we see Jaina confront is Professor Putricide with the Plague Dog, Precious. Putricide resided in the plague works of Ice Crown Citadel. The maddened scientist spent every waking hour looking to perfect a plague for the Lich King, one that would destroy all life on Azeroth. It was the Plague of Undeath that began the Scourge's ascent to power within Azeroth, and it seems Putricide was looking to develop that further. He not only managed to do, in his eyes, the perfect plague by the time heroes assaulted Ice Crown Citadel, but also develop a number of noxious liquids and gases to defend himself. Not only that, he was able to construct the two flesh beasts, Festergut and Rotface, and a pet for each, Festergut Stinky, and Rotface's precious. The two flesh beasts needed to be slain before heroes could even think of engaging Putricide. I personally feel Putricide is more likely to be just an adventure boss and not have card representation. His fight relied heavily on positioning, which can be mirrored in some way on the board, and he would transform during his encounter. Just feel he has more to offer as an adventure boss. The next undead monstrosity we see Jaina with is Lord Marogar, the first boss of the ICC raid. One we also know is an adventure encounter. He was the first bone wraith to be added to WoW. It was assumed Marogar was a hideous creation of the Lich King, but even after Arthas' defeat, other bone wraiths have been seen. Earthrager Patar was formed in the deserts of Uldum, far outside the Lich King's reach. We don't know much about these creatures. They could occur naturally, or be creations of the Scourge. Patar may have been used as a boss encounter in the Halls of Origination for the cool effect. We also see a towering Frostworm stand behind Jaina. These beasts are undead dragons, the risen corpses of the blue dragonflight that were driven to near extinction by the crazed Deathwing. One of the greatest slain by the aspect of death would become the Lich King's favoured worm, Sindragosa, once the prime consort of the aspect of magic, Malagos. We have seen Sindragosa art used in Hearthstone before, representing Chilmore. Her power makes Chilmores look pathetically weak in comparison, able to wipe out entire armies with her chilling breath. She's an adventure encounter, but will she also be a card? Lady Death Whisper is another of the confirmed adventure bosses, but will she be a card? She was the supreme overseer of the Cult of the Damned, and like the cult's founder, Kel'Thuzad, was a lich. The cult were living members of the Scourge, agents of the Lich King that could sit in plain sight of his enemies. They were a crucial part of the initial spread of the Plague of Undeath during the Third War. I would assume Death Whisper took over as the cult's leader after Kel'Thuzad's second defeat in Naxxramas. One of the Ice Crown adventure encounters I'd really like to see as a card is Blood Queen Lanathel. Not only a cool character design, but also an interesting story. She, along with the rest of her High Elven brethren, suffered horrifically at the hands of the undead Scourge. Most of them killed, and their capital of Quelth alas, reduced to rubble. Lanathel would follow the lead of Kael'thas Sunstrider, who would rename his people Blood Elves in honour of their fallen people. Kael teamed with Illidan, and they would attempt a direct assault on the Frozen Throne. 
this would fail, and while many escaped, some were left stranded in the wastes of Northrend. Lanathel was one of the unlucky ones. The Lich King mercilessly sought out those that had looked to defeat him, each of them falling before the King's thirsting blade, Frostmourne. Eventually, it would be Lanathel's time, and she fared no better against the King. The Lich King must have seen potential in the Elf, and raised her to act as Blood Queen, head of the San Lane. This group of undead vampiric elves would oversee the Scourge's activities across Azeroth. Death Knights are clearly a major theme of this expansion, and over the years, WoW has seen its fair share of notable Knights of the Damned. One we know is an adventure boss, Deathbringer Sourfang. The most powerful of the Lich King's Death Knights in life was Dranosh Sourfang, son of the Horde's legendary warrior, Varok who currently acts as the leader of the Orgrimmar Orcs in Sylvanas' Horde. Danosh and his father were separated at the time of the First and Second War, reuniting in the Burning Crusade expansion. He would accompany his father to Northrend to fight the Lich King and take part in the Battle of the Wrathgate. This saw him face to face with the Lich King. Dranosh charged the King, but with one swing at Frostmourne, Arthur shattered Dranosh's axe and cut the Orc down. Then, drifting his sword over the Orc's body, Dranosh's soul was consumed by Frostmourne. Perhaps one of Warcraft's most notable Death Knights is Darian Mograin, son of the first wielder of the Ashbringer, Alexandrus Mograine. Darian himself would also possess the sword, but a corrupted version, wresting it from his father, who had been killed and risen to serve the Lich King. Darian sought to free his father's soul in prison within the Ashbringer. As the Scourge, under the command of Kel'Thuzad, the Salted Light's Hope Chapel, where many great heroes lay to rest, Darian knew what must be done. He plunged the Ashbringer into his heart. This act of sacrifice freed his father's soul, and in recognition of Darian's sacrifice, the souls of thousands of fallen rose up to vanquish the Scourge army. In the fallout, only Darian and Kel'Thuzad remained, the Lich unmoved, as the Ashbringer was back in his possession. With his new Death Knight, Darian taking it to battle. Darian would break away from the Scourge and form the Knights of the Ebon Blade, a faction of Death Knights free from the Lich King's control with amicable relations with the Alliance and Horde. He would be a key player in the campaign to end Arthas' rule as the Lich King and crown Bolvar Fordragon in the role. In the Legion expansion, Darian and the Ebon Blade have allied with Bolvar. However, Unlike with Arthas, they are not bound to the King's rule. They recognise him as a very powerful ally in the fight against the Legion. The Sarian is another potential legendary, the third Death Knight brought into the Lich King's service, after Arthas and Folric. He would later act as the Alliance's connection to the Ebon Blade. After travelling to Northrend with Arthas, the Sarian was part of the force that defeated the Dreadlord Malganus. After Malganus's defeat, Arthas would vanish, followed by the Guard Captain Folric. The Sarian would venture off to find his prince and captain, only to be butchered by Folric and transformed into a Death Knight. During the Scourge's assault on the elven capital of Quel'Thalas, the Sarian would create another Death Knight I think is a likely candidate for a legendary, Kul'Turar Deathweaver. Having seen a rare glimpse of humanity in the Sarian, Kul'Turar tried to free him from the Lich King's control. Noble intent, which turned out to be foolish. As Death Knights, the Sarian and Kul'Tura formed a friendship that lasts to this day. Even when they were on opposite factions, they showed each other the utmost respect. Kul'Tura's friendship with the Sarian saw him on the receiving end of Sylvanas' ire. Accusing the Death Knight of being weak by entering a truce with his old friend rather than defeat him on the battlefield, she imprisoned him below the Undercity. He would later be freed by the Ebon Blade in the Legion expansion. Another prediction I have, which is probably unlikely, is seeing Death Knight versions of previous cards. After all, Benbro did say, Everybody dies. Our heroes are going to, why not our legendaries? Cards like Tyrion, Van Cleef, 
Gromash or Antonidas for example would be really cool to see converted to Death Knights. Though this corrupt version of a card idea has already been seen in Old Gods. I'd be up for it though. It's possible Blizzard may dive into the Ice Crown Citadel dungeons for some of their legendaries too. They may put Bronjarm into the game, a member of the Cult of the Damned and Minder of the Lich King's Soul Grinders. The Foreman of the Pit of Sauron, Crick, riding upon his Plague Eruptor, Ick. The Necromancer keeps an eye on the Scourge and Alliance and Horde slaves as they dig up the Mineral Saronite to fuel the Lich King's armies. Or perhaps Folric or Marwen, two of the earliest Death Knights who defend Frostmourn in the Halls of Reflection. Converted into undead abominations after Arthas defeated Malganis and were present as Arthas drove Frostmourn through the heart of his own father. As a more niche legendary, which would also mean we don't rely on death knights and bosses to make up our legendaries, the ghoul Timmy could be added. He is a ghoul that can be found in the human campaign of Warcraft 3 during the Cult of the Damned mission. Unlike much of the Scourge, Timmy is neutral not attacking the player, though he could be killed and would drop a ring of superiority, increasing all stats by one for a hero unit. It's also speculated this ghoul may be Timmy the Cruel, a boss in the Stratholm dungeon. His dungeon journal reads, Timerson was infamous for his savagery on the field of battle. Some speculate his sadism stemmed from ceaseless bullying he endured as a child. Now reborn as a scourge monstrosity, his mind shattered, he is tormented by those memories, causing him to answer to the name he once loathed, Timmy. We may see a notable undead Varykal as a legendary, perhaps over Thane Balagard, ruler of the Varykal encampment, Jortenheim. The Ymirjar were undead Varykal who had proven themselves, besting other Varykal in battle at Jortenheim. Unlike many of the Lich King's servants, the Ymirjar seemed to retain their intelligence and free will. Serving the Lich King was their choice. Those that lost their trial were not so lucky. Being risen as Vargul, more feeble than the Ymirjar, Vargul too retained some of their intellect. But all this leads to is them resenting their fate. You'd also think it would be now or never to introduce the Lich King into Hearthstone, but which version would we see? The tortured soul of the Orc Nezul trapped in armour? The corrupted Prince Arthas who removed his own heart to make himself merciless? Or Bolvar Fordragon, a noble knight that took it upon himself to keep the Scourge in check, to act as Jailer of the Damned? There are many members of the Scourge that could become legendaries in the upcoming expansion, a lot of which I'm sure haven't been mentioned in this small video. If you have someone or something you'd really like to see as a legendary, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and think we're legendary, give it a like. Uh, of course, if you feel we're very much like a card that should have never been printed, hit the dislike button. To keep up to date with future videos, follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Until next time, happy hearthstoning.